Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome to you all. Welcome to the live webinar for authors, aspiring authors, established authors, ready to get. Welcome. Welcome, all aspiring authors, established authors, ready to publish your book. If you're out there, let me hear you. If you are out there, let me hear you. Type in the chat. If you're out there, let me hear you. I'm just checking the sound. Can you guys hear me? Can you all hear me okay? Let me put my face out there. Hey guys, welcome to the Publish It webinar. Today is Saturday, April 18th. Um, if you are joining me for the first time, say hello in the chat. Let me know that you're with me. Type in the chat, let me know where you're, call you're chiming in from, where you're joining me from. What part of the world are you joining me from? We are live on YouTube. Welcome. I hope you have a pen and a paper, guys. I hope you have your favorite beverage. I'm gonna give you a few minutes to go and get your favorite beverage because I have a lot of information to share in a short amount of time. And I'm excited to share um, how to get your authorship journey, how you get your book publishing journey started. So if you know someone, guys, I'm gonna give you uh, another opportunity. If you know someone who wants to write a book, They've been talking to you about it for years and they haven't done anything about it. Share this YouTube video with them right now so they can get on because I'm answer, answering uh, questions throughout this webinar as well. So I'm gonna do my best to answer the questions at the end of the video um, so that I can just stay focused with releasing and sharing the content as quickly as possible. All right, hello, hello, welcome. Welcome, welcome. How's everyone's Saturday going? Despite of everything that's going on in the world, um, it's vitally important that we stay focused on what's important as far as what we're supposed to be contributing to the world. Um, a lot of us, I know I've been guilty of it, um, been distracted with social media like never before. If you're at home, uh, many people are saying that they're bored, but then there, I don't even know what that word means. Honestly, bored is not even in my vocabulary because there are so many things that I have to do or can do or would love to do that's on my to-do list that um, I don't have an opportunity to be bored. So I'm, thank I'm thankful for that. However, there are a lot of people that are not bored out there and they are creative and they're doing amazing things, guys. During seasons like this, we need to really um, kind of do a self check and realize that there were millions of millionaires that were created in times of recession and times of, like these, um, you know, throughout the years, um, past, present, and future. There will always be an opportunity through every adversity. Uh, there's a quote by Napoleon Hill that said, every trial, every adversity, I know I'm chopping it up, but the point is that within every adversity, within every challenge, there is the seed of an equivalent benefit. In other words, there is an opportunity in that seed for you to grow, to be successful, to do something amazing. 
So I'm excited for all the authors out there that are ready to get their message out, that are ready to get their books published, that are ready to get their words in books and their books into seminars, their books into workshops, their books into schools, whatever the case may be. Um, I'm excited, I'm excited. I thought I saw something flicking there. All right, guys, so with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get started. For those of you that have jumped on on time, thank you. For those of you that are coming on, um, as you're coming on, you can always say hello in the chat. Let me know where you're joining in from. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. So I'm gonna turn off my camera so we can get focused on what's important which is the message. So here we go. All right, so hopefully you guys got a pen and a paper and your favorite drink, as I mentioned. So let's get started. So you wanna write a book, excellent, but you don't know maybe where to start or you haven't started it, why not? What's holding you back? What is keeping you back from moving forward and doing something great? Um, there are many reasons why people don't start their books. Um, you know, some of us have uh, fears. There are things that are holding us back. There are reasons, whether it's starting that's the problem, whether it's commitment, whether it's money, um, you don't believe you have enough money. Maybe it's kids. I have four kids, I get it. Uh, maybe it's just life in general. Look what's happening right now. This is a major cat catastrophe. I mean, the world, we are, we are in a moment of history right now that we will remember for generations. Like it's just amazing. It's, 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 it's flabbergasting, honestly, because you can really say that we're living in a time where the world globally shut down. I have never heard of such an, a catastrophic event. You know, yes, we've had events that have impacted certain parts of the country and not others, but this actually, in, in, it encompassed the world globally. So it's profound and could be serious um, distractions on what it is that you're trying to do in your world. Um, because I don't know about you, but when I create schedules and I have plans, Sometimes they don't always go as planned because life happens, because things happen and, you know, we kind of get off course. But the beautiful thing is, if you're flexible, you're going to make it. As long as you're flexible, you're going to bounce back. So you don't have to worry about that. But what is holding you back from starting your book? I've heard someone say that um, it was time. They felt they didn't have enough time to write a book. All right, so whatever their ex the excuse is, either you don't start, you start, you're not sure, whatever your reason, we know life happens, but what is holding you back? You're gonna have to really kind of take a self-evaluation and ask yourself, what is the core reason why I am not moving forward with writing my story, with sharing my knowledge, with writing that book, that book idea that you've had years ago. You know, I can relate. Um, let me know in the comments what your reason is for holding you back. I can relate to many of these reasons that I just mentioned. Now, my story starts in 2013. I had to have emergency surgery to remove my gallbladder because I had large gallstones in my liver and, and my liver was overworking. You can say that I was pretty miserable around this time. Um, I had serious pain. It was just, it was horrible. I had to stay home from work and recover for about four or five months. And mind you, I still had kids to take care of. I had a husband to care for who at this point was taking care of us. Um, you know, there are moments in life that help people either propel you to your destiny and that's not to say that these moments are always pleasant, but at this time in my life, this was my moment. I did some serious soul searching and I found solace in writing. I decided that I was going to write a book of affirmations. Check this out, guys. I wanted to write a book just for me. It wasn't that I wanted to be famous or I wanted to 
publish a book that was far from my idea. I just really wanted to get my mind and my mouth on positive things. Can I get an amen? If you can relate to getting your mind and your mouth on one accord and going in the positive direction and not negative, because moments in life can make you negative and speak negative things. But I had to, to really kind of steer my ship because I, if you want to see something different, you have to do something different. So the book that I actually wanted to write of just some simple affirmations um, turned into, evolved rather, into a 220 page goal setting Bible. Now I call it a Bible because it was more of an inspirational book, not just your average goal setting book. There are tons of goal setting books out there, but mine was more emotionally because it's 80% it's emotion and it's 20% action, guys. The reason you're not moving forward, 80% of it is your well being, your mindset, your heart, your emotional state, and 20% is your work ethic. So um, I did it for that reason. I had no writing skills. I didn't graduate from college. I had never written a book before. I didn't know anyone who wrote a book at that time in my life. And I definitely didn't have the money to publish a book. Did I mention that I didn't know where to start? All I had was an idea and a dream. I figured this was the perfect opportunity while I was on bed rest to get it done or at least try, right? Right now, this is an opportunity. While you are at home, some of you are able to stay home. Um, you're looking at it maybe as a downside. You need to look at it as an upside and say, how can I make this time work for me? How can I make this you know, be an opportunity for greatness in my life? How can I use this as a springboard? Guys, you need to look around because there are diamonds in the rough out there, but you have to dig them out. Nothing is going to come to you on a silver platter. You have to go and get what you want. So I was determined that I was going to at least try. So this can either be your perfect moment or it can become that victim moment where you complain for the next five years. Guys, if what you've been doing over the last five years has not afforded you the goals and the dreams and the aspirations of what you've been wanting to do, then it's time to do something different. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. If you want a different result, you have to do something different. I know that's a cliche, you've heard that before, but nevertheless, it's still a truth. There are truths out there that might not be on physical pen and paper, black and white, but there are laws in the in the world. It's, you know, some people call it karma. It's the law of reciprocation. What you put out, you're going to get back. If you don't put anything out, you're not going to get anything in return. So after reading a book called um, The Science of Getting Rich, by Wallace D. Waddles, I realized that many people suffer from something called excusitis. Now, I looked up the def, there is actually a definition for excusitis, which is pretty funny. Nevertheless, it means the behavior of a person that finds all sorts of excuses to justify their poor performance and results or their lack of action. I can, I'm going to admit, I'll be the first because some, a lot of us don't like to admit that we suffered from excusitis. I was one of those people. I was good at blaming others for my failures and lack of opportunities. I was good at blaming the boss, blaming society, blaming my lack of education, blaming this everyone else except for myself. You have to come to a realization that you are the master of your ship. You are the captain of your soul. And you need to direct and guide your mouth and your mind in the direction that you want to be in, in the next year, in the next five years, in the next 10 years. But for me, I was determined to make my dream a reality. I wasn't going to sit in the slum of excusitis. After much research, late nights and long days, I published my very first book in 2014. Unleash Your Divine Design. I cannot tell you how excited I was to receive the box in the mail carrying the first printed copy of my book. Guys, I was elated. There's no feeling 
of knowing that you created something and you're about to open that box. And I was nervous at the same time, to be honest, because I thought, well, what if it doesn't look good? What if it doesn't read well? Or what if the pages are a mess and you know, yada, your, your brain just goes on overload. But it was almost like bringing home a newborn baby, that kind of feeling. To all the moms out there, you know what I mean. Notice how much my book though has evolved over the years. This goes to show you that once you learn a skill, guys, it's something that no one can ever take from you. Before, that's what my book cover looked like on the left. On the right is what it developed into throughout the years. Now, <clears throat> I can update it again. I just haven't had the time. I've been busy writing more books. Um, it's just like, once you get one thing down, you wanna do it again and again and again, and it, it's exciting. Guys, John Maxwell wrote 25 books before he became a bestseller, before he became nationally and globally known. So even though, you know, here we are six books later, I've written six books since, since then, um, it's been an amazing journey, but I'm not discouraged. I'm continually, continually sharing the message on how to help other people get it done. Now, after publishing my newest book, something in 2019, I published my book, Thank You for the Ice Cream. Something shifted within me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really thankful because of all the support that I've received throughout the years of people um, supporting my books, buying my books and all that good stuff. But what happened in 2019 was that my my dream shifted from just publishing books for myself and obviously to help other readers, but to actually help other people who wanted to publish books do the same thing. And that's where this journey started from of me creating an, a YouTube you know, channel for aspiring authors, from me creating courses on, and workshops and webinars on how to help other people get their message to the masses. So, what is amazing about writing books, there's so many benefits to writing books, guys. It opens doors for you to share on different platforms. So because I wrote a book, I was able to speak at several events throughout that year in 2019. I had you know, not spoken at events before on that capacity. You know, Maybe it was once, and not to mention the invitations that I've had to come and speak um, even this year. So I'm excited about the open doors and books give you that open door. T.D. Jakes um, said, a friend of mine told me that um, she had, I don't know if she was watching a video or she had seen something that it was written, that T.D. Jakes does not invite people that do not have material. Guys, when you go and speak, for example, let's say you do a book about finances or about repairing credit or something like that and you go and you do a one day seminar on your book, you know, the bullet points of your book on how to um, change their credit or how to increase their finance, fin financial portfolio. You, once you leave, that's it. That's all they have is your bullet points, but you actually are the one that carries the steps, the, the, the secrets behind the bullet points, you know, those daily transactions that need to take place that's in your book. So that would actually would be in your book if you had a book, but if you only had your message, you're not really helping them when you leave. When you leave, you're gone. How are they supposed to follow through with your message if you don't give them something to follow? So books allow you to put your message into a paper where the person can actually follow step-by-step step on how to get it done. And that's why I created my book, Publish It to give you that step-by-step -step process on how to publish your book. So why do you want to write a book? What is your reason? Comment in the chat below, let me know why you want to write a book. I know there's many reasons why someone would want to write a book, whether it's to share their story, testimony, or their life experiences. Some may want to use it to expand their business by sharing their knowledge, their skill set, or their expertise. Some may want to generate another stream of income and quit their day job. Some may want to address an issue they feel passionate about or have an answer for. Whatever the reason, it must be a strong one. Why 
Having a strong why is very important for the conception of your book, guys. Because if you don't have a strong why, or if there's no purpose for your book, you will give up when times get tough and you're tempted to lose passion and momentum. Guys, it happens. For those of you that have written books and got stuck in the middle, you're, you, you're a living testimony that that is so true. Life has a way of hitting us over the head, knocking you down to the ground. So when those moments do happen, that strong why has to be on the forefront. You have to focus on the reward. That's the only way you're gonna be able to bear the cross and give birth to your purpose. Okay, so stay with me guys. I know you came on for the how-to step-by-step and I promise I'm gonna to get to that, but I have to cut down some of these trees, some of these myths that I call them. There's some myths to publishing. Now let's bust up some of these myths because these are embedded mindsets that a lot of us suffer from, which keeps us back unknowingly from publishing a book. Because these things uh, somewhere along the line, you've read it or you've seen other people and you thought, wow, they're amazing, they can do it, but I can never do that. So let's get rid of some of those out of the way. Here's one. Authors who self-publish achieve little to no success. Uh, that's not true. And I'm going to go into detail on that in a minute. What's another one? You need a traditional public book publishing company to publish your book. Guys, there are so many authors who started their journey through self-publishing, even famous people like Stephen King, Edgar Allan Poe. You might recognize this one. Possibly the most well-known modern self-publishing success story is the one of E.L. James and her book, The 50 Shades of Grey series. Now she first published, self-published guys, that's the key right here. She self-published her book back in 2011. And even though it had mixed critical reviews, it quickly became, became an international bestseller. Now the series has sold over 100 million copies worldwide and it holds the record for the fastest selling paperback. Here's another author that you might not know. Her name is Lisa Genova. She was attending grad school, grad school. Come on, no excuses, guys. She was attending grad school when her grandmother was diagnosed with advanced Alzheimer's. The tragedy became the inspiration for her book, Still Alice. Genova made the decision to self-publish back in 2007. Again, she self-published. After she was rejected by every commercial publisher to which she pitched her manuscript, after gaining readers and popularity around the world, Simon & Schuster picked up the book and republished it in 2009. Today, the book has even been adapted into an Oscar-winning film starring Julianne Moore. Now, these stories really encourage me. How about you? Let me know in the chat. Are you ready to write your book? Type yes in the chat. Let me know. Yes, yes, yes. It's time for you to create your own success story. I get excited because if it happened for them, it can happen for me. It can happen for you, but it's really about your mindset and getting over those myths that are holding you back, getting rid of the excuses that are holding you back. Oh, my book is not gonna be good enough to be a bestseller. How do you know that if you never try, if you never apply yourself? I'm sure they, they didn't write those books because they wanted to be a bestseller. They just wrote it because it's what they wanted to write about. So. It's time to do your own thing. Now let's talk about a few more myths. Here's another one. You need to be a great writer. You do not have to be, you do not have to have a writing degree or be great. Um, there are different reasons why. All you need is a dream to write a book. There are many different ways to get around this. You can leverage other people's skills to clean your book up. All right, here's another one. It takes years to write a book. Okay, guys, if you're serious about writing a book, you can get it done in 90 days or less. Some books do take longer than others, but really you're the ultimate and deciding factor in that equation. You're the one that determines whether you're gonna be able to do it or not. It takes discipline and commitment. Here's another myth. It costs thousands to publish a book. This is so far from the truth 
And I am so glad that I was able to publish my first book in 2019 because I crushed that myth down to the ground. When I wrote my first book, I think I spent about $4 for an author's copy to review. And I paid a friend about $100 to edit a few parts of my book. I didn't even edit the whole book and I published it. Okay, maybe it wasn't a good idea to publish it without being edited completely, but I did it anyway. I did it anyway. You can hire someone to clean it up later. Don't get caught up on that because if I would have been caught up on that, I probably wouldn't publish my first book. Therefore, I would have never published six books six years later. You can self-publish your book for little to nothing. And I'll talk about this a little bit later. Let's talk about another myth. Traditional publishers will market the book for you. They provide all the marketing support. The truth be told guys, many traditional published authors are finding their own, they're funding their own advertising just like self-published authors. And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. Here's another one. You need great design skills to create a cover for your book. There are so many websites that offer help with creating book covers for free. And some sites, you can even hire a freelance graphic designer for as little as $5 to create a book. Now, I don't encourage you to spend just $5. I mean, guys, we spend more than that on a cup of coffee. So really, when you're creating a budget for your book, you want to spend a lot more um, of your budget towards the cover of your book. If you're not able to do it yourself, pay someone else to do it, but put a little bit more in your budget for the cover. But you don't need to hire a professional that's gonna cost you thousands. That's a myth. So now that we've got all the myths out the way, let's narrow down your topic. Let's get down to business here. If you're writing a book about yourself, that's great. But you're going to need to scale down your content to your most impactful events that you know would benefit the reader. I have so many people that say, Madi, I wanna write a book about my story, my trials, my this, my that, and it's excellent. But you have to really narrow it down. What are the most impactful? You know, I recommend in my course, I, I do a mind mapping session, a mind mapping exercise with my students and um, to help them take their idea out of their head and put it on paper. Because there's something powerful that happens when you write it down on a piece of paper. You are giving birth to the invisible, which is quite exciting because when you see it on paper, it just does something to your psyche. It, it, it encourages those, uh, the happy hormones, I forgot what they call them, the endorphins that get your blood flowing. So I want you to ask yourself these questions. We are talking about the purpose of your book, why you write it, why you want to write a book. You need to ask yourself these questions. Who is your reader and what do you want them to learn? What are you passionate about? What is your skill set that you would like to share? Guys, just because something is easy to you, my mentor tells this to me all the time because I find myself telling her, oh, it's easy to do that. And she says, no, it's not. It's easy for you because you know how to do it, but it's not easy for someone else who's starting out. So you have a skill set. You have something that you're good at that you can actually share that information with somebody else to help their life become a little bit easier. Do you have an answer to a problem? Are you passionate about a topic? So all of these reasons are questions are just to help you brainstorm on what you want to narrow down and what you want to talk about in your book. So let's do a quick two minute mind mapping exercise. Now, of course, I give my students more time than this, but for the sake of time, I need to accelerate this process. So now that you've decided on a topic, you've got your topic, you're going to take a sheet of paper. Now, I hope you have your paper and a pen because I asked you to make sure to have a paper and a pen before we started. Now that you've got your topic, I want you to write your topic in the middle of your page and circle it or put a cute cloud, whatever. It's, we're not being fancy here. We're just doing something, a quick exercise. Now, I want you to write down everything that you can think of 
that comes to mind in regards to that subject. I mean, everything. Don't leave anything on the table. Whatever comes to mind, I want you to write it down. Even if it seems silly and unimportant, these could potentially be chapters and subtopics for your book. Okay, two minutes, ready? I'm timing you, set, go. Oh, you can use the picture that's there as a reference on what your mind map is gonna look like. I don't want you to draw those lines and all that fancy stuff. I just want you to write down everything around that, that topic. Write, 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 write. Come on, come on, come on, just write. One word, two words, a phrase. Quickly, quickly, quickly. What is your topic about? Hopefully you have your topic. You're writing everything down. All right. Okay, that's been, got 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Write, write, write as many words as you can. Okay, and it's done. We're finished with that exercise. So I'd love to know how many words you came up with in just two minutes. Normally I give my students about 30 to 45 minutes to do that mind mapping session, but I gave you only two, but I'd love to know how many words you were able or, or phrases you were able to come up with. So let me know in the chat. Now, once you decide on a topic, then you need to create a schedule for your writing. You need to block out specific times throughout the week and throughout your day so that you're going to dedicate, that you're gonna to dedicate to writing this amazing book. Now, the best part is you need to commit to that time. Let everyone in the house know that this is your writing time. You might have to get up a little earlier or stay up a little later, but trust me, it is worth the sacrifice. Remember, if it, this is your book, no one is gonna force you to write your book. Of course, unless you owe someone money and they need you to finish the book to sell it. Hello. But most of us do not have anyone pushing us on a daily basis to finish the book. You do have loved ones and friends that might say, hey, how's your book going every once in a while? And then you feel bad like, oh yeah, I didn't, I haven't picked it up in a while, blah, blah, blah. What Again, excuses. Guys, you have to commit. If you don't uh, plan, you're gonna fail. If you don't, if you, here's the, here's the quote by Brian Tracy. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. If you don't focus and concentrate, you'll have to work for someone who will force you to focus and concentrate. Now, Speaking of someone forcing you to write, having an accountability partner is a great benefit, is an absolute benefit. Someone who you trust, of course, who can check in on you, who will constantly keep the goals and dreams before you and comfort you in those hard times. I am so grateful to my husband. He has an amazing, he's an amazing accountability partner. He is my coach and my mentor, which is kind of interesting. And we just discovered this not too long ago because I don't think people realize that God has placed people in your life to be an asset for you. Now, if you have relationships in your life that are not assets, it's time to check and rethink your, your relationships. I'm not trying to be funny, but everyone is not in your corner. And you have to have people in your life that are gonna push you to be great. And if they're not, then it might, you might need to be in a season of separation. And it's not that you're trying to be a jerk or you know, be um, high-minded or you're too good for them. That's not it at all. You have to really separate yourself in a season to get your dreams and, and goals established so that you can come back and be a better person for them and help them when they needed it because they weren't able to be that for you in that time. So my students are accountable to me and I'm accountable to them. 
I follow up with them based on their goals, their aspirations and timelines. I ask them, what is their purpose for writing the book? And I'm gonna keep you to that purpose. I want you, I want to help you push you to give birth to that book. Of course, I provide support throughout their writing journey. And, and that's why I created the course because I wanted to have people that didn't necessarily have an accountability partner in their life. Um, you know, and let's say they didn't, they couldn't afford to participate in these, uh, you know, these great plans that you hire a coach that you got to pay a thousand dollars for and they help you accomplish whatever, whatever. And that's great. But at the time of my beginning, I didn't have a thousand dollars to just throw at someone to give me direction on where I should go. And then I don't see results and then it's a mess. And then I'm upset. My husband's upset. The kids are upset, you know, so I had to kind of work things out in my own time, but I wanted to be able to be that for someone else knowing where I, where my, where my beginnings started. Okay. So I'm re being redundant here. So I apologize for that. Now, now that you've got your schedule out the way, it's time to organize your content and get started with writing, write, 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 and write some more. Now, here's a major roadblock to your writing. Guys, I don't know how many times I have to reiterate this to my students. I mean, I have to reiterate to myself, to be honest, and it's to make sure that we do not edit. No matter how much of a temptation it is to clean up your writing, don't do it. Not only will it frustrate you, but it can delay and stifle your progress. It will delay and stifle your progress. You're gonna edit your document once you've created, um, completed your entire manuscript. If you con constantly are going back, fixing the errors, fixing the periods, changing your sentences, changing your, you're gonna get so frustrated and behind schedule, it's not even gonna be funny. And then what happens? You become paralyzed, you don't complete it, you finish, it's over with. Now, you're gonna edit your document once you have everything completely done, right? Then you can decide on whether you're gonna self edit your book or you're gonna hire someone to edit your book or better yet, if you know someone who's an English teacher, ask them if they can exchange talents with you. Um, you know, barter with each other. Like, you know, if you edit my book, I'll do this for you. I'll, I'll create the cover for you or I'll um, help you market your book or whatever. I will give you a book review. You can barter with someone and throw the perfectionist out the door. The perfectionist is not gonna help you sell books. Once you've completed your manuscript and it's been edited, you need to format it. What the heck does that mean, Madi? Basically, you're just making it look pretty on the inside while you're getting your book edited so you can be working on your book cover and making it pretty on the outside. Now, I have great resources that I give my students in the course where they find these websites and how to use them for their benefit. Um, one of them is canva.com that I use for um, creating covers for my book. You see there the design cover, thank you for the ice cream. I created that, dis that, that um, book cover and I created the back cover as well. Um, formatting the, if you see in the middle, it's just really designing the inside. So your the book on the inside looks appealing for the reader. Um, for formatting, um, you can use diyformatting.com. I'll put the link um, in the description below. Um, so you can do that completely free. You just copy and paste uh, the formatting. And, you know, I mean, the DIY website that I'm, that I'm gonna give you the information for, um, actually shows you how to um, line up your pages and put your 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 acknowledgments, your table of contents, your um, your preface, and all that good stuff. It gives you the template, and I I offer I do um, place the templates in my courses for my students as well. All right, so now let's publish your book. Let's get to the meat of the matter. You're done with editing. 
you're done with the formatting and you're done with the creation of your book cover. Now it's time to decide where you're going to publish your book and who you're going to publish with. Now, if you have more questions on the editing and the um, book cover creation, the designing and all that, please let me know your, your questions in the comments and I will definitely do my best to answer those throughout the, uh, by the end of the website, um, the webinar rather. All right, you've done everything. Now we wanna go ahead and publish the book, but we need to decide how we're going to publish our book whether we're going to self-publish or we're going to go the traditional route. Now, you have to decide which one you're gonna choose. As I mentioned, I chose the self-publishing side along with many others. Now, that was just a better option for me at the time. Just because you self-publish does not mean <clears throat> that you don't have the ability to pay someone to publish. You don't have the ability to pay for traditional publishing. That's another myth. Okay, that's not um, the reason we start the self-publishing. Self-publishing just gives you more control of your book writing, control over your formatting, control over the, the, uh, the cover design. And it also gives you control over where you're, you're going to market your book. It gives you control over how much you're going to earn in your book, okay? just drinking a little bit of water. <clears throat> now, um, I chose the publishing, the self-publishing. It was just a better option for me. So who knows, maybe one day I'll get a publishing deal and become the next JK Rowling author of the Harry Potter series. But until then, I'm gonna continue to keep my royalties as is. Now, if you choose to publish on amazon.com or barnesandnobles.com, these companies allow you to self-publish your book and earn royalties from book sales. I personally love using them because I don't have to house any inventory or fulfill any orders. Now, when a customer buys through book through the um, these platforms, Amazon or Barnes and Nobles, they ship the book directly to the customer, and I get a residual income check monthly de deposited into my business account. Now, you can choose however you know you want to set up your payments, whether you want them to mail you a check. But it, once your book gets sold, you don't have to worry about anything. Of course, you can order author copies, and I'm going to talk about that now. If, <clears throat> excuse me, author copies of your book get distributed to you, and you get them at a discounted rate. So this is good for if you're doing an event and you want to have books to sell at your event, then in that case, yes, you can order copies and keep them on hand. But if someone from across the world in, in uh, the UK wants to order your book, you don't have to worry about the shipping costs. Amazon in the UK is going to take care of that for you. Excited? OK. Now, you get, when you order a copy of your book, you get it at a discounted rate. They charge you a basic book printing fee. Now, this would be the cost that Amazon or Barnes & Nobles um, used to create your book and to ship it. For example, your book may sell on Amazon for $15. Now this is the price that you created. That's how much you want to sell your book for. You can either do it more or less. I'm just using this as an example. But the author's cost is $3 and well, sorry, the cost to create the book is $3 and 71 cents. So you pay $3 and 71 cents for the author copy. You can order up to 999 author copies at a time. Uh, that also means that if your book costs uh, $3.71 to make and you sell it for 15%, you earn a 60% royalty on that $15, giving you a $5.29 profit for each book sold. Now that's just one book, you earn a profit of $5.29. If you sell 100 books, that's $529 that you could earn. OK? Stay with me now. You just sold 100 books. You made $529. <clears throat> if you sold 500 books, you would earn $2,645. If you sold 10,000 books, 
you would earn $52,900. So can authors earn money and make a living off of publishing books? Absolutely. 52,000, some of us don't make that in a year. And if you do, excellent. This could be an additional stream of income bumping you up to the $100,000 mark. Now, you catch my drift. So if you go the traditional publishing route, you may spend upwards of five to $10,000. And they most likely will give you a $10,000 advance on your money. And they expect you to pay that back. Hopefully your book does well enough to pay them back. This is how many artists and um, authors get in trouble because the big names say, oh, we love your book. We wanna publish your book and we're gonna give you $10,000 for your book. And you're thinking, yay, but you don't realize that's your money. You're just getting your money fronted to you. You have to actually pay that back. And if your book is a flop and it doesn't sell more than 10, you don't earn more than $10,000, you're gonna to have to pay that publishing company that money. So whereas self-publishing can range anywhere from a hundred to $2,000, but don't take my word for it. In an interview with The Right Life, uh, uh, the interviewer Dana Sitar, she shares with several top self-published authors spent to release one of their books. Now these are real numbers. Okay, Joanna Penn, who's an amazing self-published author, I have several of her books. She spent a total of $1,650 for editing, print formatting, bartering for the cover design, and she paid BookBub ad fees to advertise her book. That was her marketing. The greatest cost, most of her budget went towards editing. So you have to decide on where your budget is gonna go. Now she saved money by building relationships and bartering. Her DIYs, what she did herself, she did the marketing, the ebook formatting, the conversion, the sales and the distribution. She did those herself. Now Dana, she spent $150 for editing and illustrations plus a $5 monthly fee for distribution. So she pays a company to distribute her books. She pays $5 a month. Her greatest cost was illustrations, which is still quite impressive because she paid someone only somewhere in that $150 for illustrations. That's crazy. What is illustration? Those are the book pictures, pictures in your book, okay? Um, she saved money by bartering and editing, um, bartering for editing and illustrations. Now, the thing she did herself, the cover, the formatting, the conversion, marketing, sales and distribution. Guys, the common denominator here, the, they did their own marketing, they did their own sales and distribution, they did their own formatting. And you can do the same thing. Now I did the same thing. I spent only about a hundred and maybe about $200 total on publishing my first book. Why? Because I did everything myself. I created my own book cover, as you can see earlier in the, the, um, the, the slide sh show that I showed you my before and after. I, did, I didn't have any skills. I didn't have any editing skills. I didn't have anything. I didn't know where I what I was doing. And I still started off with a great low budget. Now, the point is you have to work hard, uh, work smarter, not harder. Now, truth be told, if we interviewed those same women about their publishing journey, I can guarantee you that they spend way more in time than money on self-publishing. They might have not spent a lot of money, but they did spend a lot of time, which is labor. I'm sure they sacrificed a lot of time, family, energy, events in order to scale back financially. They didn't go out to every family event, every friends event, they didn't go and, and, you know, they gave up the great, the good for the greater, so to speak. It's not just the cost, it's the intangibles that have no price value. Time is, guys, time is a commodity that you cannot replace. So I took the time for you and gathered all the information that I've learned over the past six years, so you don't have to spend the next year, six years trying to figure all of this out. 
I am giving you the blueprint on how I was able to get it done and copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste for six books. And I'm working on my seventh as we speak. So again, I ask you, why do you want to write a book? Why do you want to publish a book? Let's see what you all put in the chat. All right. So I have a testimonial of one of the students that accepted the seven day book writing challenge because I created the seven day book writing challenge to kind of get people started with writing their book because I found a lot of people were struggling with even just the starting part. Okay, now she wrote, I want, I, I want to write about my life, my struggles, my blessings and what the Lord has done for me. I'm in tears right now because I'm so blessed to still be alive after everything I put myself through. Now, she says, thank you um, for being able to guide her through this. And she hasn't even started yet. Now, she started the seven day book challenge since this testimonial. Um, but this is just her accepting the challenge. So I am so super excited for her because I know that she has an emotional connection with her book. She has a strong why on why she wants to write the book. Just the real realization with her wanting to write a book brought her to tears when she considered her life story. Now for these reasons, this is what keeps me going. I decided to create the course to help people like her to learn how to publish a book on their own schedule at an affordable price. So the seven day challenge is a great start for many aspiring authors who are stuck at the beginning and they just need a little push. They need a little coaching to get them started. And here's what the others had to say. Another student wrote, for, I accepted the seven day challenge. Madi inspired me to write my book and she gave me advice, which is invaluable. Ways to complete it without spending a lot of money. Using resources that are at our fingertips. It fully impacted me and I know I can do this. Thanks Madi for your help. Now I'm building confidence in the person because then they're seeing that, wow, I can really do this. I can actually write a book. I, it's not as hard as I thought it would be. Why do you want to write a book, guys? Why do you want to write a book? Another student who accepted the challenge, who was actually a student of the authorship, um, the ultimate, ultimate starter, she wrote, for years, I had a strong desire to write while just working on several pieces just for me. Again, I just wanna reiterate that. I'm gonna stop right there because I had the same idea. I just wanted to write a book of affirmations for myself. But she says, as she came across this challenge, not quite sure what to make of it, something leapt within me and I heard the words, it's time. The crazy thing is, as I started, I became so excited to finally prioritize and get organized. I am expectant, I am excited, and I love it. Now she is on her way to get her book published in 90 days, and I am super excited for her because she enrolled in the Authorship 101 course. Another student that accepted the challenge um, who actually went through the workshop, the author's one day workshop, she's a graduate, she wrote, I believe that most people want to learn how to write and publish a book or a blog, not like Shakespeare, but write well. They want to write content that is interesting and valuable to other people. I took Madi B's one day workshop. She openly shared everything from the tools in her toolbox to her routine as a writer and an editor to the process of publishing a book. The same tools she used to write and edit and, and self-publish six books. I believe the seven day challenge will take writers to the next level in their craft. Amazing. I'm like, who is she talking about? So who is ready? Type yes in the chat. If you're ready to get your book published today, I'm here to help you get it done. I'm excited, I'm excited. Let's go, let's go. Now in a moment, I'm gonna open the doors to the course, but before I do, I have to share this, um, this because I always believe that success leaves clues. Now, in an article written by La Lachlan Nicholson in December of 2017, he wrote, over the last 25 years, John Maxwell has written 70 plus books, selling 20 plus million copies, translated into multiple languages around the globe. So what contributed to Maxwell's writing success? 
And the answer is quite simple, he said. It's found in his own teachings of the importance in having a great team. Maxwell partnered with a writing coach. What? Did you know that? He actually had a ghostwriter. After several years of writing his own books, he realized that he needed someone to help clarify his message better and get more of his ideas onto paper effectively. If you wanna do something well and do it more often, you need to partner with the right people. John Maxwell says, you would never fulfill your potential alone. If you really want to get your book started, guys, you need to partner with someone. You need to partner with a team that's going to help you get your message out there. You will not be able to fulfill it alone. Okay, maybe you'll be able to fulfill it alone over the next 10 years. It took me a while, but I realized that my first book, even in my first book, I still needed help. And what did I do? I went on YouTube. I researched night and day. I had a friend help me edit and format it, format my book. I mean, I wasn't completely alone. I had to do a lot of the groundwork myself, but I realized that if I would have had the opportunity to partner with someone who had already done what I, what I did, I would have done it to save me tons of time and headache and frustration. So, if you're ready to do it, then I'm ready to help you navigate through the book publishing world and get your message to the ones who need to hear it. I'm here to help you reach your goal, whether it's to generate another stream of income, help you leave a legacy, share your mes message or grow your business. Now, <clears throat> here's where, um, Okay, guys, sorry about that. I'm skipping over some stuff here because I did have an amazing um, opportunity that I wanted to share with you all, but that has um, gone away. That offer has gone away, the giveaway. I was doing a giveaway uh, for one person who enrolls in my course that I will actually give them a opportunity to get their book published with me for free, completely free. However, we already have a taker on that and I can only partner with one um, author a year. So for this year, I've already completed that, um, that giveaway. But now you can see that I can easily charge thousands for my courses, but I don't because I'm passionate about seeing everyone win. Everyone who has a desire, the commitment, and the determination to write and create a book deserves to have access to this information. Because I remember how I felt not being able to enroll in these high paying courses because it wasn't in my budget. And <clears throat> I was the rejection of being left out because no one was sharing this information unless they were a VIP member. Have you ever had that feeling? Have you ever felt your access was denied because you weren't part of the in crowd? Well, I want every student who enrolls in my courses to feel like a VIP because we are important and we have a voice. But I also realize that we need each other to succeed. One is too small a number to achieve greatness. No accomplishment of real value has ever been achieved by a human being working alone. Again, another quote from John Maxwell. Now through books, you're able to reach many people. You're able to minister, uh, help, encourage other people. Books also open doors for you to, that weren't necessarily open before to be able to speak and share your message on platforms all over the world. Guys, writing a book is just not writing a book. I absolutely love what I do. I love helping people. And when I can help a student recognize their full potential and help them fulfill their dream, it makes me feel good. Now, if you're ready to partner with me, you want to uh, get your book started. You say, Madi, I'm ready. You know, I've been waiting for this opportunity for a long time. I've been looking to partner with someone who can help me to get my message out there. Then I'm ready to partner with you. I'm going to add the link 
where you can actually um, enroll in the seven day challenge or you can get, get started in the different courses and I'm gonna go over those in a few minutes. But before we go there, because I know that for you, writing a book is more than just a book. It's a testament of when you leave this earth that you leave a legacy that is eternal. Now, when Napoleon Hill wrote the book, Think and Grow Rich in 1937, he had no idea it would be the highest circulated book in the world next to the Bible. Now, first, he first published during the Great Depression. How ironic is that? I would say this is truly a moment similar to that that we're experiencing right now. This is where history repeats itself. This book has sold more than 50 million copies. It remains the biggest seller of Napoleon Hill's books, of all his books. Business Week Magazine's bestseller list ranked it the sixth best-selling paperback business book 70 years after it was published. 70 years. Talk about <clears throat> talk about leaving a legacy. His book became a bestseller long after he had left this earth. Come on. What is your legacy? What is your legacy? He also wrote the book, Outwitting the Devil. Now, this book, it, wasn't, it was written in 1938, but it was not published until 2011 due to much con controversy with his family, um, his wife after he passed, his wife felt it was too controversial. She didn't want to deal with that. So she said, don't publish it yet. Um, I don't want it published wait till I'm gone, wait till my children are gone. So, you know, a couple, a generation or so passed. And then all of a sudden, the manuscript, the Napoleon Hill Foundation was formed and they had all writings and everything, uh, all of Napoleon Hill's books and all that. That's who distributes the, the sale of these books and so forth. They had this manuscript since 1938 and they gave it to a woman named Sharon Lecter. And they said, Sharon, we really believe this message has to go out there. We would love for you to edit, let us know what you think. And if you would publish it. And it was published in 2011, June of 2011, guys, come on. He now has left a legacy to his children's children's children. Not only has he left a legacy for his family, he's left a legacy for millions of people just like you and I to have the mindset to think and grow rich, not to allow ourselves to be uh, victims of circumstances. So if you know anything about the book, you know that it's been the foundational um, success to many companies today. Now, um, the link to get started in, in, in my courses are gonna, is going to be in the description below. So I have three courses to choose from depending on where you are in your publishing journey. Now, some of you may not know where to start. You may not you know, have an idea. Um, so I'm going to go over the, the three courses with you in detail so you can understand what is available to you. Now, for starters, some of you, again, as I said, you may not know where to start. You may, you may not have an idea for your book just yet, or you may have a topic, but you don't know where to begin. You don't know what your title or your tagline should be. You're not sure about the concept that you wanna write about, then the starter plan is probably the better fit for you. It's, um, it's the best of all, it's free. Guys, it's $0. It's a seven day challenge on how to get your book started. I show you how to organize your book, how to, um, how to outline your book, how to do the, uh, the mind mapping session for each chapter of your book. It's really to get you started. And I send you emails daily for seven days, keeping you accountable to your story. I show you how to create a schedule for your writing. And of course there's motivation in there to keep you going. Now, if you're ready to take your book to the next level, Let's say you already have your book idea, you've already have your outline, you know what you wanna write about, you have your chapters in place and you want to get your book published today. Like if you had the steps to how to publish your book, you're ready. Then I recommend taking the authorship workshop. It's a one day workshop. You can actually take it as soon as we're done with this webinar. 
and get started on step-by-step -step on how to upload your book in Amazon, how to, where to place your title, your tagline, how to get your book description, um, how to choose categories for your book, and how to upload your documents, how to upload your book cover, how to create your book cover if you don't have one. Um, I show you how to edit um, your book and format it. So a lot of great resources in that workshop and it's valued at $179, but I'm offering you, I'm offering it to you at a low cost of just $59. And I can guarantee you that with this webinar, you will have your book live within the next 24 hours by following the step-by-step -step process in this author's workshop. Now, you may need a more personalized, customized plan. You, you are missing step B through what, Y, right? You have A and you wanna to get to Z, but you're missing everything in between then the authorship course is probably the way for you to go. Now in the authorship course is actually a 90 day plan on how to become a published author in 90 days or less. Now, of course, it depends on the speed, your commitment. Um, I do have this, uh, this workshop, or sorry, this course is actually available to you for one year for a full 12 months. So you have up to 12 months to go through the entire uh, curriculum. However, if you want to, it's paced for a 90 day plan. Um, you get a 90 day authorship checklist. The workshop that um, I charge for $59 is included in this um, course. You get downloadable checklists, worksheets, templates, you get the full design ensuite where I actually show you step-by-step -step on how to create your own book cover using Canva. I give you the tips and tricks on how to get that done, how to download, upload it, all that good stuff. I am showing you how to create your own book launch. I give you, there's comprehensive videos and lessons and audio um, uh, lessons in there as well. And the best of all is you get a live one-on-one -on -one book mastermind call with me to discuss the vision and the book launch for your book. Now, I'm excited about this author's course, guys. I mean, I put my heart and soul into this, creating this, this course, um, and it's going live on May 1st. So you're getting a pre-sale um, price at $209. That's it. And I give you everything you need to get published in 90 days. No joke, no hype, no scams, no, none of that. It's valued at over $2,000, honestly. I put everything in there that an author needs. I even give you editing tips. I show you how to format. Uh, literally, there is a video on how to actually format your book, whether you're using um, writing implements such as Scrivener, or I show you how to use free applications. Um, I show you how to use either Google Docs or Microsoft. If you don't have Microsoft Word, no problem. I'm gonna show you how to actually write your book without even writing your book. I mean, there's so many valuable things in here that you're gonna be empowered. You're gonna be excited that you're gonna be able to publish your book by the fall. And you'll be able to set up an amazing book launch to get your book into people's hands before Christmas, before the holidays. How beautiful would that be? Guys, if you take the time to write and, and plan your dream, you will be able to get it done. And I can guarantee you that you're gonna make it happen within 90 days, if you stick to everything that I share with you in the course. Now, again, this is just a recap on which would be better for you, whether you're not ready to start, then you might wanna go ahead and get the starter plan and get your book started. Structure your book, get that outline for your book, create the plan for your book, create the content. You're gonna put your things together. Then from your starter plan, you can jump to the ultimate plan and will it really just, it, the starter plan is kind of the foundation. But if you already have your foundation in place, guys, then go ahead and get the ultimate plan and get it done in 90 days. I cannot wait 
to see what kind of book you're gonna write. Now, I know my courses are priced way below their value and you know why. So choose the plan that's right for you and let's get started with writing and publishing your book this year. Now, I just wanna reiterate, you do not need a major publishing company, guys. You do not need uh, th them backing your book. All you need is to believe in your vision and get it done. Commit to getting it done over the next three months, 90 days, 12 weeks. That'll, that'll go by so quickly and you can get it done while you're working. Now, I'm ready to show you the tips and tricks and I wanna answer some questions. So if you are on live um, and you have some questions, I'm ready to answer. So let me go ahead and give, get my face there for you. Okay, hold on guys. All right, okay, there I am. So again, um, any questions, um, have the link to get started to, for you to get started in the description below. So I am so excited for to partner with you to get your book started in 90 days. Guys, it can be done. I have, um, for those of you that are enrolling, oh, I forgot to mention, I do have an, a great offer. I forgot to mention this. For those of you that stayed on all the way to the end of this video, this is bonus for you. So I, have, I am starting a affiliate program where for those of you that may not have the $209 to get started today, um, or $209 is a stretch for you. I do have an affiliate program that you can participate in that if you know someone that is ready to get started that wants also has a desire to write and publish their book, you can get 20% on the sale of the authorship course in your bank account using PayPal. I have set up an amazing affiliate program. I haven't released it yet. It's all gonna be released on May 1st when the school opens So right now, I am doing pre-enrollment. So if you're ready to get started, um, I want you to go ahead and get started on the pre-enrollment uh, sale price of $209, okay? So after that, it's probably gonna go up and it just has to go up for a, a little while um, because I can't keep it at 209 forever. But um, I do, I am going to be setting up a, um, a multiple payment payment plan. So for those of you that are interested, you can send me an email to um, win at maddiebenning.com. Let me put that in the chat. Let me put that in the chat. Send me an email if you are interested. Okay, there's my email, shoot me an email and I will definitely give you the information on the affiliate program and also the, um, the plan for payment. Now, for those of you that enroll, you're also gonna get a free copy of my book, Publish It. You'll get the ebook version so that you can actually go step-by-step -step through the ebook. You'll be on the webinar. You have access to the course. Guys, I am loading you up with everything that you need to succeed. You have everything already in you. I am just the one that's the midwife. You're the one that has the content. I wanna help pull that content out of you and put it on paper. So if you're ready to get that done, then let's get that done. Let's partner together. I'll be your accountability partner. I'll make sure that you get your book done in 90 days or less. I look forward to working with you and I look forward to seeing what kind of book you're gonna publish. So with that being said, I am leaving guys. Thank you so much for taking the time out to be with me today. What time is it? Ooh, we went a little bit over time, um, but I thank you for staying on. You are worth it. And I'll see you on the other side. Adios.